Will this new distributor fix my rough idle issues? Today we're going to find out. This is my 1984 BMW 318i with 65,000 miles. I bought this car for 2500 bucks, and since then we've done a bunch of work to it. I've replaced every single fluid inside this car. I also replaced some intake hoses. It's got a new vacuum advance on the distributor, new cap, rotor, spark plug wires, plus spark plugs. We did a valve adjustment, a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to see what I've done, check out all the previous videos. Link in the description. Let's fire it up. I'll show you how it runs. So it was running pretty solid at cold start right there. Then all of a sudden, about 10 seconds in, I heard a click come from the engine bay, which came from the ignition control module, and the idle dropped down. Got a little bit messier. Last episode, I replaced that ignition control module. It helped for a few minutes, then went back to normal. So that's why today we are seeing if the distributor is the issue. Now I know some of you were saying it may be a vacuum leak, but luckily I have a tool in my toolbox to check for that. Here I got my air box removed. I got my intake adapter installed into the intake boot. Here I have my Ventus smoke machine by AutoLine Pro. I'm gonna get this puppy fired up. We're gonna get some smoke flowing. We're gonna plumb that through the hose into the intake adapter. That's gonna go up into the intake manifold. That's also gonna feed through the vacuum lines to the vacuum advance at the distributor. It's also going to go through the breather lines to the valve cover. We're gonna be able to pressurize this entire engine and check for vacuum leaks the proper way. Check this out. We got a little bit of smoke wisping out of the side of that throttle body. Now there's not much I can do for it right now besides rebuilding or replacing that throttle body. And luckily it's a relatively small leak so I don't think it's large enough to really cause an issue with our idle. I had the same issue in my old Jeep Cherokee and the tolerances in those old throttle bodies just weren't as tight. We got smoke all the way up to the valve cover oil cap which is good. We also have smoke to the vacuum advance hose at the distributor, so we are pretty much fully plumbed up in this engine. Our only noticeable leak is at that throttle body. Airbox is back in. I also replaced the vacuum line going from the fuel pressure regulator to the intake manifold. It wasn't leaking when we smoked it, but this thing looked absolutely terrible and it has a crack here at one end, so time for it to go. Now since we're smoking, let's check the exhaust. This is one of the adapters that comes with the Ventus kit from AutoLine. Just fit that into the exhaust there. Kick her on. Plug her in. Let it go. Now if you had a dual exhaust like I do on my E46, you can take another adapter, take one of these cone and plug kits, fit that into the port, and then you can just use this as a secondary cap. Check that out. Just a big fat leak right at the front of the muffler. I could hear it when I was wrapping on the throttle. Uh, it was starting to get a little bit raspy, so pretty uh, classic for a pre-muffler exhaust leak. Definitely not priority right now, but I figured since I had the smoker out, might as well show you how capable this thing is. We know that we have a very minimal vacuum leak up in the front end of the engine, that throttle body, we're not gonna mess with that today. And we got a pretty big leak at the rear of the exhaust, but it's no big deal. It's not gonna cause any rough running. Okay, time to install this new distributor. First thing I'm gonna do, take this old distributor cap off so I can see the rotor, so I can see when I'm at cylinder number one. I'm gonna take my half inch ratchet with the 30 millimeter socket. I'm gonna spin this crank over till I get cylinder one TDC. This cooling fan's gonna get in my way. So there's a hole in the bell housing right there and that's used for setting ignition timing. There's also a cylinder number one TDC indicator in there. I'm also gonna look at the rotor on the distributor and cylinder number one is right about here. So I'm gonna make sure that I see that indicator and I have my rotor lined up at the same time. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Why do I think that the distributor is bad? Well, that ignition control module reads off of the pulse transmitter in the distributor, I believe. And I think that's what's causing the clicking noise. Something in the ignition. Plus, a lot of you guys were saying that just replacing the cap and the rotor on the distributor will not do. There's probably play. I feel a little bit of play in it. 
You guys asked me to check that when I had it off. There's a lot of up and down play, a little bit of side to side. Okay, I found the TDC indicator through the inspection hole. And on the distributor, my rotor lines up with that little notch on the distributor, which is four cylinder number one. So that's good, this is good. Now I'm gonna break loose this hold down bolt for the distributor. It's got a lot of up and down play. We'll see if the other one has that. I mean, that's like two millimeters. This new distributor, a lot less play. Probably at least half the amount of play. Side to side feels a lot better too. Putting some seal glide on this distributor O-ring. That way it doesn't roll on our way in. I think I'll put that on for reference. I'm still getting these distributors figured out, guys, but I think what I need to do is clock it to where when it slides down into those gears, down inside the engine, it rotates to where that rotor lines up with that cylinder number one mark. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Tear me up in the comments. I'm still learning the distributor. I totally get it. I ain't the subject matter expert on this car by a long shot. The rotor lines up with number one. We also have to cap off the vacuum advance for when we're doing the ignition timing procedure. This car makes me feel stupid. Okay, 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 okay. Timing light goes back on. This is what reads RPM. Clip that onto cylinder number one. Oh, she sure is running really good so far. I did hear the ignition control module click just now, but the RPMs haven't changed from it. So we're at 2,500. I'm gonna time it to where I can see that timing reference mark with zero degrees of advance in here. Because when this car was built, they didn't have advanced timing lights. So the idle did drop down a bit, but you can see that timing indicator. We're at about 2,000 RPM and uh, I'm at zero degrees of advance on the timing light. So I think the RPM dropped because the engine got warm. I'm gonna bump these RPMs back up to 2,500 and we'll check timing again. Gotta love these prop rods. So that is at 2,500 RPM. I can still see it. I barely had the adjusted distributor to be able to see the time mark, so I think that's gonna call it good. Idle is still high. 1500 RPM. Idle right now, 1390, 1400. I don't believe I have any more adjustment in the idle control valve. Nope. While the idle feels decent, the RPMs aren't really where I want them. You know, 1400 in park is pretty high. Feels strong. And under load, we're at about 900, 800 which ain't bad. I just put it back up in the park. We're at about 11, 1200. Still can't believe I got to smog this thing. Took the vacuum advance hose, pulled the plug out, went to go put it onto the diaphragm. As soon as I touch it, RPMs increase by a couple hundred. So in reverse, 800 RPM, back to park, 15, 1600 I mean come on am I timing this thing wrong what the hell am I doing wrong is that vacuum diaphragm from one distributor different than the other I don't get it sure does fire up a lot better but it is warm well I guess we better take her for a rip around the block and kind of see how she performs go from there I just know that this high idle issue is going to be a problem when I have to go to smog it so we just need to sell this car to someone out of state Hopefully the chickens don't escape with the gate open. Nice. Oh, it feels good. I just don't think it's gonna pass smog. Oh, she's ripping. No ping. thing is driving great right now. I mean, idle speed's really funky, but 
It even has power at 70, 75, RP, 75 miles an hour. Can I do uh, three crispy tacos with the sada? Okay. And I'll do avocado sour cream as well. Okay, thank you, buddy. Thank you. So what's causing this idle to sit high? Is it my timing procedure? Because the engine feels perfectly powered. So is there something I need to change with the timing? I took the nickel out of the idle control valve air circuit, which is going to increase the idle. I could put the coin back in, but it feels like a uh, false fix. You know what I mean? I think it's masking the problem, and it's not fixing it. That's a good girl, Sage. Why does BMW never put cup holders in their cars? Look at this adorable little puppy. Look at that. She rips. She hauls ass. Successful road test. I mean, she's running really good. We got some tacos. RPM's up to 1600 in park though. So I'm gonna go eat some lunch, let this thing cool down. We will revisit. All right, I am fed. I almost forgot to show you guys. Check out this beautiful drill press that my dad gifted me on my last visit down to SoCal. He went through this thing and replaced bearings, I believe. Gave it a nice paint job. Also included this MDF table that adapts to sanding discs so I can drop this in place and be able to sand and I also got this sweet belt sander comes with this circular disc as well as a flat belt so shop is coming along nicely got this corner built out pretty well let's see how she runs after sitting so, I mean it's running really good we just need to get the idle down that's really our only goal so it's about 1800 right now although as far as the quality of the idle goes it's really good so I'm just trying to go through and check everything that I can I found a write-up on pelicanparts.com just about going over the entire idle reset procedure on this vehicle so what it's referencing is the throttle stop screw on the throttle body and the throttle position sensor so what I'm doing right now is I'm checking for continuity between terminals 2 an 18 on the throttle position switch. Have my multimeter set to resistance. That's with the throttle at the stopped position. I open it, it goes away. I close it, it comes back. So that's all correct. So it's asking for connecting a digital multimeter between terminals two and 18, open the throttle halfway and slowly let it close. When it's between 0.2 and 0.6 millimeters from its stop, check for continuity between the terminals. Now we're gonna check between terminal 18 and terminal 3 and this should have continuity when it is within 10 degrees of being fully open out of the shop out out beat it scram go get him sage get him attack we have continuity at roughly 10 percent before wide open throttle so like 90 percent throttle so that checks out for both checks on the throttle position sensor. It means I don't need to adjust that throttle position sensor. I realize that it's slotted, so you can move that throttle position sensor up and down. Now we need to test the idle control valve. We have 10 ohms. So next, I'm testing the idle control valve. I feel a buzzing coming from it, which does say online that it indicates a good valve. I pulled off the connector and I checked for 12 volts coming from the idle control module in the glove box up here to the idle control valve. I have 12 volts, 11.6. So what I'm gonna do now is I have my power probe set up that is connected to 12 volts at the battery. I am going to fire up the car, then I'm going to disconnect the idle control valve. I'm going to replace it with my power probe, and then I'm going to send a full 12 volts to the idle control valve and see if that changes the idle as compared to having the connector onto the control valve as is. It's stalled. I think I'm going to take the ICV out next. 
And apparently these are known for being faulty. Now it's doing its job. I don't know if it's doing it enough. We'll see, I'm gonna spray it out, clean it out a little bit. All right, I sprayed this thing out some more. I've done this in the past, but I just wanted to see if I get it moved more. All right, idle control valve is cleaned, actuated, put it back in, let's fire it up, see what happens. That idle is a much different story. What the hell's going on here? Well, this is funky. So now it wants to die. It's probably from me spraying out that idle control valve. You know, this makes me believe that it may be a bad idle control valve. Never had the car run this low RPM before. I mean, it's surging, but it's surging at, you know, six to 800 RPM. Let's see what happens when we put it under load. Wonder if by exercising that auto control valve with brake cleaner and activating it with the power probe, we freed it up. Hear that uh, ignition control module clicking? So I adjusted that idle control valve up. Now we're sitting at about eight, 900 RPM. I was about to take it for a drive and now the idle's creeping back up again. You're gonna get sick. Don't eat the chicken poop. So now, again, idle control valve, screw all the way closed, idles back up again, sitting at 1200 RPM. So what I'm doing now is I have uh, the idle control valve back probed, two of my flute connectors, and I'm just sitting here and monitoring voltage going into the idle control valve. It's the duty cycle, not the direct voltage that controls the idle control valve. I did discover that the idle did change. We have the lowest idle that I've had all day long, and that was after cleaning the idle control valve, taking it to the bench, actuating it with the power probe, and then reinstalling it. Since then, the idle's fluctuated from 800 to about 1200, which is still a lot better than it was before. Um, still not exactly positive what the issue is. I've been reading up on an article about the idle control module, so I got access down here to the DME, and it looks like we have the newest and the most up-to-date green idle control module box. So I'm gonna do some research tonight and see what it would take to get a new idle control module sourced as well as a new idle control valve. You can see the Jettronic on that Bosch DME there. All right, it is the next day. I got a bird stuck in my garage, but let's give this thing a cold start. Then there's one more thing I want to check before we wrap this up. Next thing I want to do is get access to the throttle body blade. I want to stick a feeler gauge in there and see what the tolerance is. Specific tolerance in which the butterfly valve is supposed to be open. All right, now I'm gonna get a mirror, take a look at the bottom of that throttle, throttle blade. So this thing is like locked shut. There is no space. Even to slip this tiny little baby hair, I don't even know how you say that. 0 0.0015 inches, tens, hundreds, thousands, one and a half thousandths of an inch. Yeah, there is a little adjuster screw right down here and that's the throttle stop. I'm gonna go ahead and put some turns on that, get the throttle to push open a little bit to where I can slide this bad gal in there, so. And this is the throttle stop right here. It's this little flathead screw. You screw that up, 
that stud pushes on this little plate right there on the throttle valve it keeps the blade open just a touch i'm curious about how this will affect the idle control valve because basically if this was closed then the idle control valve was keeping the engine alive you know because air is not bypassing that throttle blade if it's closed up completely so that means the icv was responsible for keeping this car at idle so i wonder if now that we're getting a little bit of airflow past that throttle blade if it'll change how the icv acts However, I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to have this tolerance on the throttle blade just so it doesn't stick because the uh, blade can bite into the housing and gouge it. I've realized as I've been working on this car that, you know, it's just not my favorite car to work on. And that's okay. Some people may love these early to mid 80s, you know, European vehicles. And they're awesome cars, don't get me wrong. This car is sweet. However, it's not my, it's not my favorite to work on. There are other cars that I enjoy a lot more, and that's okay. All right, airbox is back in. Everything's buttoned up. There is a lot of slop in this throttle cable, but we're going to check. We're going to adjust that after I fire this thing up. Well, that's not gonna work. Fire it up, it's at 3,000 RPM now. But that's excessive. That's too much. I'm sick and tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad. So I'm still working on adjusting that throttle stop because it increased our idle way too much. However, I just took the power probe. I have a constant 12 volts going to the idle control valve right now, which means that thing should be fully closed. I also have a ground there. So the idle control valve is taken care of. Let's fire this thing up and see where the idle sits at now. Just trying to do a little bit of troubleshooting. I don't have any test leads. So I'm using the power probe. Not what we want. Something must have shaken loose. We lost our contact. So that was with the idle control valve completely open. This is with it completely closed. Isn't that nice? We should be able to delete this idle control valve. Maybe just run a jumper to it so it's closed all the time. This is the car all back together. I closed the throttle valve way more to where I could barely fit a one and a half thousandths feeler gauge between the throttle plate and the throttle body. Idle control valve is reconnected. Let's see how high the idle is. So, because I adjusted the throttle plate from being completely closed to now cracked just a little bit, with that in conjunction with the idle control valve, now the RPMs are at like 2200 at idle. Ah. So, I deleted the idle control valve. I put a cap and a plug from the Ventus kit in there. I also shoved a bolt in here just so we don't have a vacuum leak going to the intake boot. That hose meets into the intake boot before the throttle body, after the airflow meter. So, it is technically a vacuum leak. Now what I've done, I went down with a pair of needle nose. I adjusted the throttle stop on the throttle valve to increase the gap inside the throttle body. That way I can have more air coming in and adjust my idle speed with the throttle stop screw. So, with the idle control valve completely unplugged and those holes plugged up, check out the result. Fires up. I didn't like that start up. Fires up. Idles in park and neutral, about 1100, which is awesome. Drop it down into reverse, seven, 800 RPM. Drive, seven, 800 RPM. Honestly, really good so far. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go run to the hardware store, find some caps and properly plug those things up and then we'll take it for a real road test. What we need is one plug that's gonna be roughly 18.75, 19, about 20. 
Okay, successful hardware store run. I got two of each of these sizes. These are rubber plugs. I also picked up two more hose clamps. We're gonna get these fitted into those intake hoses. Maybe take this puppy for a rip, see how she drives. Now I've seen some people saying online, run a jumper on the plug to the idle control valve, but that doesn't make sense to me. You just be causing a short. I'd rather leave the plug open, maybe just waterproof it. It's not like we're gonna get a check engine light. So far, so good. Let's go for a little drive. Sage, load up. Oh, on the floor. Come on. No, Sage, what are you doing? You got dirty paws? Okay, your paws are pretty clean. Lay down. Good girl. It's spunky. I think we could leave the idle control valve disconnected. Another thing I'm curious about is the temperature gauge is not perfectly in the center when it's warm. It's always running a little bit cold. If that temperature sensor is accurate, may need to do something about that. I like the idea of deleting the idle control valve as opposed to putting the little nickel trick in there and drilling a hole into it. It's idling nice. Eight, 850 RPM. got the ignition timing right on the money no pings it's got plenty of power pretty happy with that now I got a viewer named James from Virginia he's interested in buying this thing but we just haven't agreed on a price yet and uh, he wants to come pick it up drive it 2,800 miles back to Virginia I think the car would do it you know the tires are 11 years old they have a little bit of you know, micro cracks on the sidewalls, but I think they would hold. Um, the car's running well enough. I think it would get the job done. You know, the wipers could use some fine tuning, but you know, the car would definitely make it, I think, with uh, minimal issues. Sure would be a sick journey for him. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode on the E30. In total, we installed the new distributor. We also deleted the idle control valve. We set the ignition timing. We adjusted that throttle stop screw at the throttle body. And to be honest, this thing is probably running and driving the best it has been since I've had the car. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna pass smog, but that's an issue for a future episode because I'm getting ready to go to SEMA. So if any of you guys are gonna be there, please come by the Auto Line Pro booth and come say hi. That's where I'll be working during the SEMA convention. If you guys are interested in buying this E30 or throwing an offer out there, I'm going to be listing it on Facebook Marketplace here, maybe within the next few days if I can get it cleaned up and get some pictures taken of it. But I'd love to see it go to a viewer. Uh, so if you guys are interested, shoot me an email. And before I go, a quick shout out to all of you guys for the likes, the comments, and the support on the last video I put out on Eric's BMW. That video has 91,000 views in the last 13 days, and it's the biggest and most popular video I've put out to date, and it is just awesome to see the support and the growth from that thing. It's all thanks to you guys, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers.